Hey everybody, Bearded Rogue back again for Euro Week, and uh, today we're going to be covering Lords of Waterdeep. Uh, this is the Scoundrels of Skullport box uh, lid. However, that's because I have all of my Lords of Waterdeep in one box. I actually stacked both inserts on top of each other in the main box, and then I used the Scoundrels of Skullport lid to cover it all. Um, so, Lords of Waterdeep. Uh, what is it exactly that I love about this game? Well, uh, I'm going to limit myself to three things, because that's kind of how this series works. Um, but one of the things that I really uh, have to mention is that this uh, game is really easy at its core. Like, it's like if I was going to build a worker placement game to introduce people to worker placement, Lords of Waterdeep would be the game that would show up. Like, it would be the introduction to worker placement. And that means that this game is a game that I can bring anywhere. I can bring it to any level of uh, board gaming meetup, casual gamers, advanced gamers... Um, people who've been gaming forever, people who, uh, have not been gaming at all, and I can play this game. Uh, it doesn't take very long to explain. Uh, the rules are all pretty self-explanatory, the pieces all interlock really well, and, like, even teaching it straight out of the box with the expansions isn't overwhelming for most people. Um, that in and of itself is the first thing that I love about this game, because... I like playing games, and I hate having to exclude uh, certain people from playing games with me or having to bring certain games, like gateway games, that I'm not really interested in playing. And, you know, some people may get tired of this one, but it has enough in it that uh, it's not worn out its welcome with me, um, even though it's very easy to teach and very easy to play. Um... So that's the first thing that I love about Lords of Waterdeep, is that it plays with pretty much anyone. Um, it's, a, it's a very uh, very easy to teach, very easy to play game. Uh, and that makes it something that I bring with me a lot. Um, so the second thing I love about Lords of Waterdeep, and uh, this is um, just kind of a guarantee because it's... Uh, I, Hasbro, Wizards of the Coast production, but the bits in Lords of Waterdeep, like all of the money or thick cardboard chits that are shaped in a specific way, and all of the call-outs to these pieces on the board, um, which the board is gorgeous. Like, it, it is one of the prettiest boards that I own. Uh, it, it's you know, an overhead map of the city, but, like, it's done in a very painterly-type style. But all of the icons on the board really lend to teaching this game. All of the uh, pieces are custom pieces, are, are fancy pieces, and that really makes it, um, it's, makes it easy to teach, uh, but it also feels really good, like stacks of these cardboard uh, bits. Um, I would love to replace these with metal coins. I know that the Broken Token and some other people have uh, metal versions of these things, and I would absolutely love to do that. I just haven't found it within my budget yet. Uh, one thing I did replace, and this also leads to my love of this game, uh, this was in my Pimping My Game video, but I replaced all of the cubes with these D&D &D Uh You can find these. There's a, a thread uh, on the forums of Board Game Geek. Uh, that covers the D&D poles. You can also get acrylic versions of these, but I love the wood ones. Um, so all of the cubes in this game were replaced with little thematically shaped D&D poles, uh, and this really lends to my enjoyment of the game. Like, I liked it playing with cubes, but having the uh, rogues look like rogues and the warriors look like warriors really lends something to the game. It's not, I'll admit, like, it's not a very heavily themed game. Like, it has a lot of theme around the edges, like a lot of window dressing of theme. Um, I don't ever really feel like I'm a noble sending people out on quests. Um, but, with things like this, I can start to get into it. Like, I can, I can appreciate it, uh, for what it is. Like, 
Um, it, it just really, like, all of the cards are, of course, super linen finished and really thick card stock. And the box, uh, even though the box is one of the weirdest boxes of all time, uh, it's really pretty. And um, as I said, like, I have the base game in here, and then I take the took the insert out of the expansion and I just stack it on top of the base game's insert and everything will fit in the box um, so I can carry all of it around at once. It's a little bit heavy, but uh, it's a lot of game. Like the expansion adding the uh, various sideboards uh, for it um, and even more cards. It's The components of this game add both to the feeling that I get when I play this game um, and to the teachability of this game because the components are so distinct and unique that you can't really confuse the icons on the board or on the cards for anything other than what it is it's saying it is. Um, so it's that's the second thing that I love about this game. And the final thing that I love about this game is actually the completing of quests. And this is like a really simple thing like it's a it's a set collection type mechanic you know get a cleric and this many warriors get this many victory points um but the fact that they're quests like the fact that you're actually acquiring you're choosing which one of these you're going to do um makes it feel like almost like a ticket to ride you know routes where you're choosing which routes you want to complete and which routes you're going to ignore or put back um you don't take any quests that you don't plan on completing um you know, all of the quests have distinct rewards and distinct costs, so you can chain them together so that you take quests that make it easier for you to complete later quests. Um, the, the fact that uh, there are set collection bonuses for completing quests of particular types, um, whether it's through your lord or some of the quests are plot quests. Like this one, for example, whenever you complete a warfare quest, you get two points. So anytime you complete another warfare quest, another orange quest, you're going to get two points. So it's this whole set collection, like specificity in one department kind of uh, thing that, that really makes this game feel satisfying. Like everything integrates really well in this game, which I think also lends to the teachability of it. Um, you know, you understand why you're gathering the clerics and the rogues and the warriors and the money, and, like, you understand why you're getting the resources. You know, you can see why uh, you need particular things over other things. You're encouraged to go particular directions over others. Uh, there's just a distinct flow of the game, and, you know... Typically, you're completing lower-level quests in the early game and then working your way up over time to the bigger quests as the game goes on. And the whole Hidden Lord uh, aspect of it leads to some very interesting endgame scoring. Um, you know, the only Lord that I do not play with is the uh, Xanathar, the Beholder Lord, because they don't give any endpoint bonuses or end-of-game point bonuses, um, so, you know, whatever their score is just is what it is, uh, whereas the other players all get this rocket surge in the end as they count up their quests and see, you know, did they, uh, go in the direction that their lord encouraged them to go to or were they forced to adapt based on other players' actions. Um, I really like this game. Uh, it's a very solid worker placement game. It's kind of, as I said, an introduction to worker placement games, so it's really easy to teach. It gets people thinking in the direction of worker placement games, um, you know, being able to work on those skills of evaluating what the different spaces are, what the different rewards are for doing various actions, and really gets people into the headspace of how to play worker placement games. Uh, so that's uh, why... I recommend Lords of Waterdeep and its expansion, um, and why uh, the 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 three things that I love about this game, um, and uh, again, uh, this was Euro Week for uh, my vlogist. Uh, I wanted to cover a different Euro game that I love every day this week. Um, there may be some more Euro games showing up again uh, later on in this month, or who knows, maybe after Vlogist is over, I may continue doing videos, and we may see some more then. 
But uh, I hope you enjoyed this series, because I really enjoyed uh, showing off the Euro side of things. And um, Bearded Rogue, signing out.